I'm going to start uh, taking all this kind of fussy business off these, those, those, you know. That's today's job. I might pull the rest of the wheels and some of the brake drums. I'm just going to start getting things ready to really rip into, you know. I want to get the brakes on the car before I paint the engine compartment so I can paint the brake lines with it. Um, I do do want to um, paint the backing plates and whatnot, so I got to take all that apart so I can clean it up and, and uh, paint that, you know, and then route new lines. Radiator support, alternator bracket, that's pretty badly pitted. So, that'll look fine. I'll paint it a dull black. A lot of these brackets and this was definitely gloss black because when I took the rubber out, the back side there was totally 100% gloss black. These are the little rubber things that I took out for the radiator. And then the other, uh, and I think this is the side you don't see, that's the side you do see. So, yeah, it, it has a date code on it, too, it looks like. It is, um, no, it's a part number. Looks like it's 10156-A. Oh, I did a little research on these alternators, and I found some interesting stuff out. So the biggest alternator that this car was offered with was a 55 amp. Here, I got the book right here. So you could get auto lighter in Lee Neville, and I've had people tell me, oh, this car should have a 110 or a 120 amp alternator. I'm sorry, they didn't even offer that in 66 on the passenger cars. The school buses I worked on, the Ford B700s and B750s had the 361 FEs, and they had the 110 amp Lee Snaville alternators on them. This does, that's an auto light, not a Lee Snaville. This alternator tested at 55 amps when I took it in to have it checked. And in 66, they actually painted auto light on the alternator. And it was either orange, black, or red. And that meant how many amp alternator you had. If I, I looked at this alternator very faintly from about there to there and there to there it says auto light and it's red. You can just barely, barely see it. But I can totally see it. I don't know if it shows up in the camera or not. And uh, one of my users was telling me that this is a 6566 alternator only from the way he was looking apparently the way he saw some view of it and uh, so I imagine this is the original alternator to the car I'm, I'm gonna say it is I'm not gonna question that it isn't and I am gonna reuse the fan because if you look at this fan all the uh, blades are the same size in that replacement alternator some are large and some are smaller and the reason why they changed the blade dimension over the years is because these wine from the wind whistling through them, kind of like a siren almost. And if you look at uh, squirrel cages or anything like that, you'll notice that sometimes there's different sizes or whatever, and that's to prevent whining noises like a siren. So that was done later in the years and not this one. But anyway, it does say auto light. It is faintly visible on there. I don't know if I can clean this up and get that more visible or if that'll get destroyed cleaning it up, but it definitely was stamped. I think it was 69 or 70 when they actually physically started stamping the the cases with, you know, digits. And uh, previous to that, it was just, you know, stamped with uh, ink. It wasn't like when I say stamped with digits, I mean imprinted. And... Uh, stamped into the model. So that is a 55 amp and that is the original alternator to the car. Look at this old original voltage regulator still says auto light on it. And it 
I'll have to clean it up. It looks like it has some numbers on it. And uh, we'll, we'll check it out. But it says Autolite Regulator. Something negative. I can't read the, the writing on it quite yet. But the, that's actually pretty good shape. I'll show you a couple other things here. You know, I've been stripping out the engine compartment so I can clean it, fix that, clean it all up. You know, I got this off, the rubber piece and the rubber piece there and there, and took some of the stuff off there. I'm going to take that shift linkage off here in a few minutes. The gas line keeps leaking nasty varnish gas, so I had to plug it. I got to take those clips off. That was made in Freehold, New Jersey, and is the original fuel line from the tank. And I believe that, well, I might have said that. I think that's the original hose, too. Um, smells really bad that nasty gas. So I took the wiring harness out and I'll show you why. Two reasons why I took the lighting. This is for the headlights, turn signals, windshield washers and whatnot. And uh, most of it's in pretty good shape and it looks like somebody got in here with a test light and started probing around tearing up the wiring. So I got that to repair. Um, there's a couple other spots on it right here. So I got this to repair. And those are grounds here. It almost, I don't know, I, I, this car didn't have any animals in it. I don't think that's animal chewing. I think somebody just got nuts with a test light probe. So I got that to repair. And again, there. It's all like the same color wire, light green like they had a problem with the headlights. And uh, the rest of it's okay. This is where it plugs in at the firewall. And everything else looks pretty darn good. So I'll have to fix that uh, wiring before I put that, fix it and clean it up before I put it back in. No, I'm not going to buy a reproduction harness. I am going to repair this one and put it back in. Hopefully this shows up. This is the front balance between the radiator grill and the bumper. That's bare metal, and it's just very lightly surface rusted in places on it. Really in nice shape. Yeah, now you get a bigger picture of why this car needs springs when you see those jammed in. And it probably is the original factory shocks in there too from the looks of it. I don't think this car's really had much done to it. These need to be replaced. So, you know, this is all going to be a part. I'll check the ball joints. And if they're bad, it'll get new ball joints. If they're good, they'll stay. Um, this side, the control arm bushings aren't bad. But if I'm doing the other side, might as well do these ones. I mean, you know, it's not a ton of extra work when you got the engine out and this far apart. There is some clips here, if anyone knows. See all these little push clips? I don't know if they just, as it was rolling down the line, they had just stuff some extras on there or what the deal is. But look at that frame there. That's black paint. This thing's just black paint there. This thing's in really good overall condition. I'll just show this as the passenger side. That's where the battery ate the through so I'm gonna repair all that. I just kinda you know, I mean look at the inner fender of the fender on the inside. And again you can see the front balance. Well maybe you can't. It has just some minor surface rust on it. This one horn is a 6D2C, so maybe is that April 2nd, third shift, 66. The other horn doesn't have anything on it that I can see. But they're both, I believe, the original horns. Oh yeah, it does have something on it. it does have something in, I can't really, it's right there. Looks like it was in like a yellow paint. It looks like a same thing. 
And then one thing I want to leave original on this car untouched, and I think this is going to be it. I think this is the factory original voltage regulator. That says F for field, A for armature, S for stator, and then another F. I don't know, maybe that first one, it's an I maybe. But it's definitely an ASF, which would be armature, stator, field. Yeah, I can't tell what that first one is. So it's auto light regulator. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna seriously thinking of this is kind of tucked in behind where the battery goes, so it's hard to see. But I like the fact that you can still read auto light regulator on it. So we may leave that alone. We'll see. All right, I got the engine harness out. There's no damage to the engine harness. It's all in really nice shape. The convertible top wiring was in with that harness so I had to separate it. That's the circuit breaker for the convertible top and this wire for the top which goes down through rubber grommet. Alright, I think that uh, you can see this is all wiring for the windshield wiper motor and that's not a plug connector. That's a grommet that pushes through the firewall so when I disconnect this is for the wa the washer motor or washer pump I should say or I don't know what that is it, it's going up to here these are the motor wires the washer pumps actually bolted there so I don't know if it's something that cycles the walk washer pump you know as the motor runs and this turns if it something in there contacts it pulses the pump I imagine that's what it does and uh so this is all windshield wiper motor wiring 100%. So I can just push that back through the firewall once I get the motor off the car. I'll take this clip off. And this clip off, I took all the other ones off along here because this cock stuff, as you can see, needs to be replaced. And this will come off when this comes off. And I'll probably take this the wiper blades and this off today. And... Uh, try and get some more things apart. And then there's over here, this is for the grommet that comes through the firewall. This is for the heater. That goes to the heater resistor. A little Ford Motor Company tag on it there. It looks like it says, uh, well, maybe a N01, number one, I don't know, first. Maybe that's an N, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's an N01. I don't think it's a letter O, I think it's a zero. And then the, this Fumoco SXA, and then it has a C5, 2B, and then a 18A586A maybe. So that's the harness for the, heater fan. I took out the resistor so I don't damage it. So that's your low and medium speed. Your high is just straight, straight uh, 12 volts to the motor. So I'll clean this up very carefully so I don't damage it. Clean the connectors and clean these connectors. And if you've watched my past videos on other cars and things I've restored, I'll just put that in a little bit of snowball toilet bowl cleaner. I'll clean up those connectors like brand new. And then these are the connectors to the blower motor. The orange is the positive, and the, I believe that's the way it is, and the black would be the ground. It might be the other way around. But the black went to the resistor, and the orange went to the um, harness. So that may be, that, that may be your high high fan and then this would be your medium and low fan so that may be the way that is but I don't know about taking this this plastic piece out I don't want to get the car that far apart but that heater blower motor is back in there all the sun bolts so I might take I'm going to take the hood hinges off to clean them up 
So it looks like I can take this off, this bracket off, and I can get that heater blower out and lubricate it, get it running smooth. And I'll clean this plastic all up really super nice. I'm not going to paint it. I'm just going to leave it natural and clean it up. And then there's some numbers there. Looks like a 764. And I'll probably photograph that really well. Maybe I can write it back on there or something with a marker pen or something after I paint this. I need to get a new grommet for where they put the air conditioning lines through. I tried to get this off, to get the master off, and those are really stuck on there and I am not gonna heat those. So I think I'll take the booster off. This is what holds the booster on and then disconnect it from the brake pedal in the car. And then I can, uh, actually it says Ford right there. Then I can, um, clean the booster up and paint it and get this master off. I'll probably just cut the nuts off if I can't uh, can't break them free. I don't want to snap those studs off and I don't want to heat it so it's going to take a little bit of fuss to get those off without damaging everything. Anything. I might take the Dremel and just a little cut off wheel, cut it, spread it open a little bit and then it'll come off. Still has fluid in it, it hasn't leaked out, surprisingly. But, you know, like I say, the pedal moves, but it, the car has no brakes. I'd probably put money on it. If I bled them out, they'd probably somewhat work. Yep. Needs new wiper blades. This thing's in pretty good shape. This is, uh... Trico on it. it. Does say made in USA on it. So I imagine these are all 100% factory original, other than maybe the rubber. I don't know if the color shows up here or not, but that is actually the original body color on there, not the repaint color. So somebody, when this car was painted, they painted it without the arms and they just sprayed over these. Obviously needs some vacuuming out. It actually doesn't look bad though. Just full of dirt. Let me get the shop vac and clean it out. I don't see any rust out in there. It's all in really nice shape. So I took this uh, little clip off right here that holds the linkage on the motor and everything works nice and Super free. I couldn't get in there to vacuum back in there, so I'll just take these out and then I can lube them up while they're out. Those things are as free as can be, but I am going to lube them up. They're just really nice. Lube up all, of, you know, everything. And uh, it's, I'll, I'll get a light and show you down in there. It's really clean. It's just absolutely clean as can be in there. Try and get the light to where you can see. Minor, very minor, minor surface rust here and there. Most of that's just still dirt and you know, it's like here, just dirt and stuff like that. But no rust out in there and at all. These little screws here or what hold the trim to the cowl and I'll probably take that off too for when I paint the car. I'm just going to leave it for now. Oh, the wiper motor's off. I find these little wires and this has green paint on it. So there must have been a tag or something on that at one time. I found these in several places on the car and I uh, thought maybe they were from something else but apparently, you know, from aftermarket stuff, I think they're, I don't remember where I saw them. I found two or three of them throughout the engine compartment and uh, but when I see paint on it that tells me that was on there before the body went through the paint booth and I got to replace I took this out because this this uh, stuff here this like uh, seam sealer as you see just pulls right out it's completely dried out so I got to 
got to um, clean this all out and recock it. You know, if you don't, that'll leak water in there. So they do it for a reason. So I'll re. There's three layers there. There's the car body, the cowl, which is this piece, and then this, which is this piece. And if it leaks between this and this, it'll go inside the car. If it leaks between the top one and that one, it'll just go down in the cowl. So this is a, the important one is the bottom one. Well, with this off, yeah, I can clean it up super nice, make sure it works. Clean this aluminum case up back to its natural aluminum. Paint the motor metal black like it originally was. We paint this black. I'll take that off from the from the motor. There's some screws underneath here, so that'll come right off and uh, clean it all up and make that look brand new and work perfect too. So on the wiper transmission, I just filled that part with oil and put oil up in here. You know, and they turn like I say, they turn really easy, but. I want to make sure they're lubricated and I'll take these apart because these have rubber bushings and I don't want to get oil on the bushing. So I'll just kind of run a little wire brush through that hole. And then I'll put some white grease on the white lithium grease on the like the this part right here. And that way this won't be seized in because that shaft turns inside that sleeve. That sleeve is mounted in the rubber. And these are the same clips that hold this, like this, to the motor. So those are going to be the same type of ends. The brake booster is off. Getting in under the dash, you have to take a little clip off. I'll show you. And then you can unbolt the booster and get the, the uh, um, booster out. So this little clip is on a pin on the brake pedal. And you take this out and then you can slide that linkage from the booster right off the pin on the brake pedal. I'll just leave that in the car because that way I won't lose it. Yeah, the rubber boot between the firewall and the pedal, this, this goes in this hole. It's kind of messed up. So I'll put a new, get a new boot for there. Those are the, these are like studs that were in for the booster to the firewall and they unscrewed from inside. I put penetrant on them, but that's okay. I don't care. This is the part that goes over the brake pedal and the brake light switches right there with that. And that boot goes over this. So I dumped the fluid out of that. Yeah, back of it's in good shape. So I can, uh, I don't know if this has any numbers on it or not. Let me look at it. Yeah, I don't see anything right off the bat but if I find them I will definitely video them whoops the cap still has there's some oil in the fluid above the seal and it was dripping out yeah it's definitely come apart so I just took the shift stuff off I'm gonna get these off uh, maybe tomorrow or something I'm kind of running out of time I got other commitments this evening so I kind of got to wrap it up here I surprisingly got a lot done. I worked on it for maybe three hours and uh, got the wiring harnesses, wiper motor, brake booster, shift linkage, all this rubbery plastic stuff off. I was gonna bump the den out there. I got my but like I say I'm just that'll be tomorrow I'm running out. I gotta weld those two holes shut too. So can you see how it's starting to come apart? So that will, the rubber will eventually, if I don't replace it, hammer out of there and then the control arm will move on this and then the car will drive very poorly down the road. It will be all over the road. And that, the other one, you know, the rubber is just, it just needs to be done. So we're going to put control arm bushings in it. And this wiring here, I'll just push through the dash when I get ready to paint and I'll just mask these, or the connectors where the engine harness and lighting harness went on. I'll just mask them off, but the other wiring I'll just push through into the interior. And, you know, I, I can't stand that when I see a, you see a beautiful restoration, and then they paint the 
the wires. I'll clean those up too so they look like new wires. I'll wipe them down with some lacquer thinner. That cleans that kind of stuff up really well. But, you know, I just don't like that when you see, you know, it's kind of like little details like this where somebody got over spray on those hood bumpers, you know. There's, you can push these little bottom tabs in with a pair of pliers and pop them right off takes two seconds why wouldn't somebody take them off to paint so you know and then you can get paint them behind there and under too well i gotta take this little bracket off that's for the windshield washer bag so that's supposed to be black so i'll repaint that and uh i think i'm gonna pull both hood hinges so i can clean them up and i'm gonna have to pull this box so i can get to the heater motor and uh before I paint the car, I'll put the hood back on and get everything lined up. And then I'll just leave the hinges on. So all I have to do is bolt the hood back on here. And generally, you know, I don't know. I have never really had a lot of issues with lining things up if you mark where you take things apart. And uh, so I'll do that. And then it'll uh, go together easier. And I gotta repair that rust and this rust. I'll get this bolt out, get some of these bolts out because these panels just unbolt and then I can fix that, cut that out, weld it up, cut this out, weld it up. It's uh, just spotted in a few spots across here, but I'll probably cut it in here somewhere, you know, and just replace this bit. This bit here is fine in there. This is just where the battery acid ate it up. And I can paint them behind where the voltage regulator went now. And I'm going to get those headlight buckets out and the grill out. i got to get the radiator grill out so I can, you know, paint the core support up pretty. You know, I want this stuff. This is going to look as good as that. I don't want that, you know, standing out like a sore thumb because this looks horrible. So I want this to look just as good as the engine. And... Uh, so I'm gonna, that's why I took it all apart. It's the only way to do it right is to disassemble. Take out the wiring harnesses, take off, you know, take all, it took, like I say, it took me maybe three hours. I'm gonna take all the hydraulic lines and stuff off before I clean and paint. It's gonna have, like I say, all the suspension. That way, you know, it'll look nice because you can clean in behind where the hydraulic lines are. And then I'll put the new lines on Probably just before I paint so that they get painted too. I want to use just regular steel lines. They'll last 50 years, you know, if it's not driven in the crummy weather. So I just want to, I think it would look nice. So anyway, you know, just paint them with the, with the chassis. And more stuff waiting for the bead blast cabinet. This is a transmission shift linkage. This piece here goes to the steering column and that piece down to the transmission this bolts the engine that to the frame so i think that's going to be it for the day i think it's a day and uh, if you like the video hit the like button if you want to see this amazing 66 galaxy you know get this all prettied up and that pretty engine in here and and uh, get the body all prettied up subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching